Rwanda last check had 38% malnutrition levels and malnutrition leads to stunting. Every three or four children born out of 10 are stunted. This is um, SDG, Sustainable Development Goal 2, which was identified as something which has the biggest impact, not only on obviously the health of the child, but also the health of the country, the GDP. It, it has one of the biggest impacts on a country's GDP. We came together with Government of Rwanda and all of our shareholders, and we said that what can we do about it? And AIF is, um, is a result of that partnership, where we said that, what do we do to impact malnutrition, but also in a way which actually creates other impacts in the region? Um, and the impacts being um, impact on local sourcing, impact on economic development of Rwanda, impact on creating more jobs, and then obviously the most important impact is actually reducing malnutrition. Sitting on 40,000 uh, square meters of land and employing over 300 staff in the Kigali Special Economic Zone, Africa Improved Food celebrates its first anniversary. We are, we are here to create an impact, but also to give returns back to our shareholders. Um, it's been a year since we've, I mean, it's been a year and a half since we've set it up, but officially we've been, uh, it's, we're completing a year since we inaugurated the plant. Um, we, uh, the objective is uh, we have to break even in the next three years, I mean, in the next two years, so total, uh, as we've agreed with our shareholders, we will break even in three years, which is not a bad uh, rate of return for an investment this size. We've invested 60 million in this plant, 45 million in capex and 15 million in working capital op uh, opex. We're doing fine with that. Um, and then hopefully, as we said, in the next two years, we will break even. At full production capacity, the plant needs 28,000 metric tons of maize and 12,000 metric tons of soybean annually. <laughs> Before AIF came, we did not know how to handle our harvest properly. We learned that proper handling starts from the field. Prior to the coming, we thought you only cultivate and go back harvesting without following the progress of your crops. They trained us on proper handling of harvests, from planting seeds, weeding, and adding fertilizers such as urea in maize as well as pesticides to kill insects such as armyworm and tracking all the progress until the crops are ripe. The skills we acquired helped us in increasing our harvest. We now gather yields and sell at good prices. It has relieved us of all the burdens associated with farming. The most important work that we do is with, with our farmers, all the work we've been doing to improve the values, uh, the agricultural value chain for us to get the right quality of product, not only the right grade, but also products which ab have no aflatoxin in them, which is that's one of the biggest um, requirements we have from our, from our agricultural inputs is it needs to have absolutely no aflatoxin. And one of the problems in the agricultural value chain is aflatoxin, the fact that there there's lack of proper understanding of post-harvest techniques uh, on maize, and that leads to aflatoxin being developed in the in the agricultural value chain. So we've done a lot of work on training and development there as well. Because we are trying to compete with Italian and Belgian um, suppliers, means that our quality standards have to be the same. So automatically when the plant was set up, it was set up in a way that we would, we would be able to deliver the same quality, but out of um, Africa, which meant a lot of work needed to be done, not only in the way this plant was set up, in training and development of people who are working here, in training and development of the suppliers who would give us the products because we only wanted a certain quality of product and it required uh, some work, uh, both forward and backward integration into the value chains. Within its contribution to the fight against malnutrition on the continent, Africa Improved Foods has been working with the government and the World Food Programme to address this challenge. At the beginning of the year, the Africa Improved Foods donated one ton of Nutri-Mama and Nutri-Toto to the USAID Tuyubake Programme distributed to the 20 early child development centers in 12 districts. 
This 20 ECD centers were selected based on children with the most need for nutritional support. One among the many projects involved in reducing stunting and boosting growth at the same time. This product goes to the most vulnerable population. This goes to children, infants and pregnant breastfeeding mothers, which means we need to maintain the quality, which meant that we could not, we had to, we could only uh, bring in the most the best quality maize we could find in the region. Now, if we would have sat down and waited for that to come to us, that would not happen. So what we did was last year onwards, we started working with the farmers. We started supporting them, deeper, going deeper into the value chain, understanding what their problems were, what needed to be done for them to be able to give us the right kind of products we wanted. We work very closely with our farmers. Last year, we were working with about uh, 9,000 farmers. This year, uh, if everything goes fine, the number is going to be in 20,000 or something. Um, and then what we do with them is we obviously train and develop them, but we also give them, we close the loop with them where we, they know that Africa Improved Foods is going to come and buy, if I put in the efforts, they're going to come and buy this maize from us. We don't go through traders, we go to them directly, we pay them on spot, we pick up their uh, stocks immediately, and we test for quality in the field and we pick up their stocks. <laughs> They pay us not manually, but by depositing the money in our accounts. That way, we have gained trust from financial institutions because they realize that we... Before, we used to deal with middlemen who mostly purchased our produce at unfair prices. Obviously, the objective is to make this model um, exciting enough for, for, our, for other shareholders to come on board and help us expand it. For now, uh, the plan is if uh, everything goes fine this year, we should uh, start um, work in Ethiopia. We've been exploring that for the last couple of years um, and then other markets as well. But um, it's um, one, one project at a time. So Rwanda is going well so far and we are exploring Ethiopia. Again, similar model, uh, private-public partnership.